and wagons roll. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome along. Thank you very much for uh, giving up a, an hour of your Tuesday afternoon. And today, all about branding, how to make a compelling brand. Now, oh, branding is a very emotive subject, isn't it? What we like and uh, different perceptions. So, thank you very much for those who are regulars. And uh, uh, so, always nice to see some friendly faces. There's also some new ones. Please welcome. Welcome aboard. You're all welcome. Oh, as always, we follow the traditional format. We'll be at, we'll be uh, uh, we will be recording this. Yeah, we will be recording. We are recording it. Uh, we've got the chat line to use. Uh, the, the copy of the slides winging their um, winging their way to you. Uh, we will always find time um, for uh, uh, for uh, for some light relief. Yeah, so that, that's coming actually, and all about all about branding. I've got today's quiz as well. Yeah, it's been about branding, and you know, I must tell you actually before we start, I um, I've got a new Tesla for my partner. Yeah, got a new Tesla for my partner. I thought it was a pretty good swap. So um, there we go. Quick branding joke there for you. Do you know the 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 hubcap, a new hubcap on a car, is probably the best place for eggs Benedict. Because there's no place like Chrome for the Hollandaise. <laughs> yeah, I've been rehearsing that one all morning. It was all right, wasn't it? Right, we better go, better go along. We you know, can't um, actually, actually, the last company I worked for, they thought I, I, they branded me a failure, you know? So I, I went off and I invented the invisibility cloak. Yeah, if only they could see me now. Right. Enough of that. Uh, let's move on. Uh, quiz. Quiz. What's today's quiz about? It's logos. Guess the logo. You, I know you like this. Yeah, on the chat line. So without further ado, guess the logo. It's not easy today. Not, we don't make them easy. So come on then. Any film lovers can guess the logo there. DreamWorks. Oh, yes. It, oh, I bet it, it is indeed. DreamWorks. Oh, I hope you don't mind. Could we possibly answer just on the chat line? Because I've got to do that. Yeah, on DreamWorks. So what's up next? DreamWorks. What's the next logo? Oh, does anyone know that one? Mm. Let's have a little look on the chat line to see if people know that one. Derek's on it. Luke's on it. And Luke. Oh, easy, isn't it? Easy today, isn't it? Motorola it is. Okay then, try this one for size. Logo, famous logos. We all got that, that was quite a straightforward one. You know, he's on it again, he's doing it, honestly. Can't catch that lad out today. Jessica, well, it is Wikipedia, yeah. Do you know, quick side talk, quick, quick tip here, you haven't heard this one before. What's to stop you starting your own Wikipedia page for your company? Who says you can't do that? You know, nobody says you can't. So how about that? There you are. There's, a, there's something to create some digital presence online. Not even not talking, that's, that will help your brand. But hey, what's that? Who's that? That's certainly out, the, you know, that's opened up the box. Yes, and you know, Sal's here again. She, she never, just between me and you, Sal, Pub quiz legend always gets them right. Pandora, yeah, Pandora. Ah, now come on, Sal, get in there. Got you with this one. Do you know that one? Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Do you know some people that honestly they just they just oh no holes, no holes. Not Firefox. All right then, come on then. A bit easy one to. Mm -hmm. What have we got there then in the logos? Oh, you're all there. Yes. Come on, it again. NASA. There we go. Actually, quick story, quick Simon story. I went to Houston on business last year. What a great place to go. And if you, you get a chance to go to uh, to NASA, fantastic. You can see where all the astronauts and mission control and, and you go inside a space shuttle and all, all the stuff that took place there. Fabulous. Great place to go. They are NASA. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so Neil Arm. Now, what have we got there then? In terms of logos, mm -hmm. we got here now. Oh, go on, Isabel. Oh, no, I you spelt it wrong. <laughs> Just joking. Well done, Isabel. Well done, Luke. Easy after Lacoste. All right, then. Come on. <sighs> last logo. I think this is last logo. What have we got? What have we got? Oh. It is indeed Isabel, Phil, and Jessica right on the money. Timberland it is. So, but there is part two to the quiz. Because sometimes there's some really clever logos with, you know, hidden meanings. And I'll share some of these with you. Message in a bottle, yeah? Sending out an SOS. I knew this webinar would have a sting to it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, everything I do is not magic. Right, let's move on. So do you know where the hidden logo is there? On that, yeah? Do you know where the hidden logo is? Well, what is a child? There, look, look at the C and the O. Hmm, continental tires. How about that? Where are they? Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Hope for the African Children Initiative. Where's the logo there? Where's the hidden meaning? Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that picture of Africa. Clever, isn't it? Yeah. I sent the rains down, Africa. Look at that. On the, on the animal theme as well. What do you see there? What do you see there? Apart from the Pittsburgh Zoo and the aquarium, you see a tree, but what else do you see? Mm, yes. You see a gorilla, lion. And fishes, very clever. Now, here's a good one for the chat line. Come on, then. What do you see there on Cisco? What's the hidden meaning there? Oh, God, Phil, honestly, I thought we'd catch you out with this one. It is. You see the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah. There's a place to go. And then go to San Francisco. I, I, uh, I would go, but I left my heart there. Yeah, and if you do go to San Francisco, make sure you're wearing flowers in their hair. Ah, oh, dear, hey, honestly, I'm on a roll this afternoon. Right, what's up next? Oh, yeah, look at that, the Guild of Food Writers. Look at that hidden logo there. What's that? Yeah, the spoon. A spoon and pen. Isn't that clever, isn't it? Yeah. See, a spoon and a pen. Oh, gosh. And Levi's. Last one. Last one. You want to wrangle over these? Come on, last one. <laughs> oh, look, can't we find a better phrase to use than rear end? Come on, honestly. But you know, I know what I mean. Yes, it's the shape of the bottom. Yes, there we go. Clever, isn't it? Right, well, we better get, yeah, some logos can change though, but get on to it now. Some logos, look at that, look at that. Look what changed during the pandemic. Golden arches parted all part of social distancing. And look, even there, Coca-Cola, all those years, the sacred cow, as it were, or McDonald's and Coca-Cola, both changed the logos. Staying apart is the best way to stay united. Fantastic. So you can be adaptive in terms of um, logos, but that's the end of it. So, we got a logo because we wanted to remember a brand and a logo aren't the same thing. And that's what we're going to cover this afternoon, amongst many other things. As it says there, the brand is not the same as a logo. You may have an association, but not necessarily. Let's talk about what the brand actually is. And we go none other than to our friend Jeffrey. He of Chief Executive Officer, or whatever he is now, at Amazon. Yes. What did he say? What did old Jeff say? I know what he said to his divorce lawyers. Anyway, what did Jeff say? He said branding is what people say about you when you're not in the room. How clever is that? Branding is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Very, very profound. But I love it. So that's one. That's a common theme for the afternoon's webinar. Because the key thing with branding. It, it is about the total experience of working 
with the customer. So it isn't about the logo, it isn't about the website, it's about everything. Your van, your, 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 the way you answer the telephone, your stationery, your social media, the whole nine yards. So I have no apology at all sharing this slide with you again. I did it recently when we talked about PR, but I, I think it's really a light-hearted, and hopefully it doesn't offend anybody, light-hearted way of, 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 of referencing marketing, PR, advertising, and branding. And if you have not on the screen, if you like old Sal there, you walk in a dog. Whilst we speak, I'll talk about it. So, marketing. I am a great lover. And then public relations. Trust me, he is a great lover. And advertising. I am a great lover. I'm a great lover, and so forth. And then branding, the same, same issue, but I understand you're a great lover. So often a great way of, of uh, reflecting on the difference between the, some of the four key elements. And really branding, ultimately, is about how you perceive a business with all that is taking place around you. So there's, there's the issue about brand image and about brand identity and why some people will prepare to pay more for an Apple phone as opposed to a Samsung phone, when probably technically there may be very little difference between the two. So let's move swiftly along and talk all about brand. Now, let me tell you about Simon's brand conundrum. Face this on a number of occasions. Uh, in the good old days, as are coming back now, we used to go and visit people. And often, that you can, and we have done it before, that you judge somebody by their car. So I often thought that when I went out in my voiture and went to a client's premises, what should I do? So, you, you know, I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts. If you want to type away on the chat line, if you have a, what I call a, um, if I want a better expression, a average car or a luxury car, you know, would you park it in the car park? And what, what perception would that give the client? If you turned up in a clean car or a dirty car? And how would he perceive? You know, I remember years ago, a financial advisor who was recommended to me turned up outside my estate. The butler went to, to greet him. And, and, you know, outside was a very, very expensive car. Two ways of looking at this. One is, hmm, he's doing well, good for him. The other is, uh, you know, you know uh, about issues, well, he's going to be expensive. Or, uh, you know, actually, is it his car at all? <laughs> you can... You can also do um, so much because it's all about perception. And you know, I you know, I often miss it myself. I would park a little distance away and walk, so people would judge me as I am, not as they think I am. There we go, little conundrum, day to day. So here is an issue about perception. You can you know about a gardening business. One man went to mow. What a great name for a business. Garden maintenance. Is it great? Is it a great logo? Is it a great brand? Is it cheesy? Is it humorous? Would you buy from him? Well, you've probably all made your mind up to those questions. Or would you rely on recommendations and referrals? Because the word is critical. It's about perception and about how your brand is perceived. And for many of you, in the small business world, you may be the brand. For the online business may be slightly differently. So it is ultimately about how you are perceived. And then, you know, for those of you who've had Sky turn up at the door, I did not that long ago. And you think about how they are dressed, the van, and the way that they come knock on the door, and they've got the little uh, covers on the shoes and all the protocols, and they're super slick, and, and the way that they speak, and the way they do that. Obviously, extremely well coached, extremely good in terms of their customer service face to face. So the whole thing, the whole brand, doesn't just about the, um, the clever adverts that may appear in the world, but right down to the people actually carrying out the day to day duties. So that person often is the face of the brand. 
how they made the customer feel. And so many people would perceive that how you make the customer feel being the essence of the brand. Then it calls manifests itself in something called social proof because we all do it. We go to online or we listen to what people say about another business. Remember, turn the clock back a few minutes. I understand you're a great lover. The perception issues about about that, and I'm much the same way as about the gardening business or about Sky TV. So absolutely critical for each and every one of you that you set up the likes of Google Alerts so you can see who is talking about you. Remember, Jeff, what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. So have your digital ear to the ground. So setting up alerts about you and your business and setting up alerts maybe about your competition as well How about doing that and then think about your social media listening so you may choose to invest a few pennies you can have the free version or you can have a slightly uh, uh, more uh, dynamic version of the likes of mention and hootsuite where you can actually set up um, ways in which to listen on social media so you can double up with google and also into social media so you can listen to what's happening about you listen to brand mentions so little homework for you there but wouldn't it be great have brand advocates you know we all need them i've already given a shout out to a couple already this afternoon so you might want you to think really carefully i know there's like to derek on the call with his uh, business where uh, is looking very much in terms of help offering services for meditation and products that will help people in that regard. And often it's down to the way that the business is advocated by others, whether it be scientifically done or educationally done or celebrity. So brand advocates. So one of the best things you can ever do is to get advocates who can recommend or refer you. And usually that comes in the form of online reviews or businesses sharing much of your content or sharing your posts. So one of the most uh, mentions in so many different forms and during the course of our webinars, often the best way in which you can find opportunities and harness your brand is for others to do it for you. And that often comes in the work form of referrals. So you can set up referral programs. For many of you who will be trading online or just by seeking referrals, if many of you are a service-based business. So your customers become your brand advocates. And then the big world of Google will be there in black and white. So picking up reviews, answering reviews and sharing reviews. But here's an example on the screen. All I did was type in Architect Grimsby into Google today. And what came up? Came up because Google picks up the Google My Business and it brought up three architects. Now, I have no prior knowledge of any of these three businesses, but the one I am drawn to is the one at the top of the screen. ID architecture that have six reviews, six five-star reviews. No disrespect to the others. They don't have a link to a website, nor do they have reviews. So maybe I'm thinking that there's credibility, this perception that I will choose, I'll pick up the phone, I will contact the first rather than the other two. I have nothing other and what I'm seeing online and making almost a snap judgment. But I'll be interested to hear if you would adopt a dissimilar approach. So to get local credibility is about the uh, issue about creating social proof and reviews. It doesn't just come in the form of Google though, because many of you may be involved in TripAdvisor, Trustpilot, Checkertrade, or something very specific to your industry. Again, a lot of us confirm what we think we know about a business through the likes of the reviews you receive. 
So please, please, with your customers, ask for reviews. You could even incentivize them in some way, shape or form. And when you have a review, please answer it and please share it. And also then to conduct surveys, you're constantly getting feedback about how you're performing as a business. So let's talk in more detail about brand. And I want to focus for a moment on brand image, about how things are perceived. And this is the thing, and I'll read this off the screen. The focus is in brand image, is from what you want your brand to represent to what your customers really think about it. And we'll go back to Jeff again, what people say about when you, you're not in the room. You may want to project image A, but the reality is your customers are thinking image or B. And so is your brand image in sync with what your audience is? And there's only one way to find out. Ask them. So audience is very much about perception and about how people feel about your experience. Let's give me, I'll give you a real life example here. Because we can all know, go back and go to restaurants now. You're out last night, were you? You were? So let's imagine you went to visit an Italian restaurant last night. Want oh, to be nice. Can't beat it. Oh. And your perception was this. The restaurant is pricey, but worth it because of the intimate atmosphere, the quality Italian food, and the great customer service. Yeah. So you accept it's probably a little bit more than you wanted to pay, but it didn't matter because I had a nice time, good service, and it was intimate. Yeah, not an unreasonable kind of scenario. We've already all been there and done it. But it doesn't take much things to tip in the different direction. Because if you experienced disappointing service and you felt the food wasn't authentically Italian, you'll soon decide that the restaurant wasn't worth the money. So you a very, very fine point here. It's in effect the same experience, but if you feel that you, 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 you haven't got the, the service you've deserved, the food not quite right, it tips on a very positive experience, but you're a little bit of luxury to something there. So there you've got the difference and all about what customers think for what to many people be a very similar experience. So this becomes the issue of brand image. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, we've seen animals already today on this webinar, Pittsburgh Zoo. But I can share with you a little anecdote. I, uh, my, uh, my cultural um, background and my, my ancestral home is in Weatherby. And there is a shop owner in Weatherby who is well known, I can't say his name for obvious reasons, laws of slander, uh, who is, has a nickname. His nickname is Rhino. Now, why are you asking, Simon? Come on, come on, Simon. Tell us why you, the shop owner is called Rhino. Well, he's called Rhino because he's thick-skinned and he charges a lot. So there's a humorous element, but it also is indicative and reflective of his customer service and how he is perceived. So have you been to Rhino's again? Is, you know, is, is a uh, less than complimentary uh, tale, but it's how, again, you are perceived. And this really comes to the crux of what we'll talk about for the balance of the day, about the difference between brand image and brand identity. The gentleman there at Rhino wouldn't probably wish to be known for that. So on the screen is, in effect, the difference between the two. Now, brand image is very much the emotion, the reputation, the impression, the belief of how you are perceived from a customer perspective, the user experience, as in our friend Rhino. 
But the brand identity is what you wish to think you are, the brand you are creating. And that's where you would like to have the two things aligned. So you may have a lovely logo and you may have a fantastic tagline and all warm and fuzzy in information, whatever you want to put in front of the customer, but if it doesn't match up to the image. So absolutely critical. The importance of your, of your brand image is that it's the impression you're creating, the awareness of you, the value you offer, and then ultimately the conversions. So if you have a strong brand image, you're halfway home. And here are five steps to create and build a brand image. The first one is about establishing your purpose and in effect, not the how and the what in a business, but the why. And the question I pose this afternoon is what is your brand purpose? Oh, that sounds a bit highbrow, Simon. Well, let me show you. Here is the outcome of a business. So this, again, is into the world of likes of meditation. But if you undertake the meditation, you, you have the ability then to go enjoy other things. So this is your aha moment. So in effect, the purpose of this particular brand is to make your life, in effect, very simple terms, better or you make you happier, and so you can enjoy the other things in life. Much in the same way that you might find with certain food may make you feel better. Something helps that. So often a great way of doing this is thinking about what your business does and the likely outcome you are offering. So the restaurant may be a great night out or whatever it might be, but there must be something a bit deeper than just the night out. And often here in a visual way demonstration so think about the brand purpose many people wrap this up in the likes of a mission statement so for example likes of hewlett packard's mission statement was to make sure everyone had a personal computer in their home so if you can somehow weave your mission statement into your brand purpose it'll certainly help frame the narrative of your brand and your marketing Second thing which is associated with that is to ask yourself this question. What makes you stand out? Mm, why should I buy from you? What makes you stand out? Mm, that thing you think about at night and it stays. Why should someone come to you? They're probably the, one of the hardest questions to answer. Sometimes the best way of answering it is to ask your customers why they came to you in the first place. Hmm. On the back of this is then to really understand your target customers. Do you know about them? And it's often said the reasons why people buy from one business over another is the emotional benefits the business is perceived to provide. Heavy slide coming up, but the, the difference really, you can argue there's functional benefits of buying from a business. So for example, if they save you money or help you in a particular way, but then there's the emotional benefits. Now just, just pick one or two from the screen. So you're optimistic, getting noticed, feel more comfortable, feel yourself, feel liked. Lots of what you call emotional benefits of choosing something over the functional side. As I said, I'll get a copy of the slide. Think about that and I'll give you some illustrations on how some bigger brands have addressed this particular issue. So, your homework, right, like the like mission impossible. Mr. Phelps, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to pinpoint one thing that customers think of when they think of your company. One thing. And ideally, that thing is what your brand should represent to the customer. What it may be one particular thing, and the illustration might be on this particular example here, a fashion in, uh, uh, business online, fashion for women of all sizes. 
we believe that fashion should look good on every woman, no matter the size. So if they are the larger lady, that, that is pinpointing exactly, very clearly, about what that business stands for. They may do different things, but it's usually the one sort of laser issue that people can clearly understand, which is the same as Premier Inn, and Good Night Sleep, and there's loads of other examples from the high street and elsewhere, that something that is of a brand association. So maybe when for many of the small businesses I encounter, and the numerous one-to-ones I've done over the past year, is to make a simple message. Less is more that people can understand. Fashion for women of all sizes, hopefully, is understood in its simplest form. So, you know in your audience, and you're pinpointing that. The next element of building a brand is to really, it's good, it's alliterative, perfect your personality. So the personality of the brand. You have to think of your brand as a person with an unmistakable personality, which you can see from many celebrities and things like that. Often it's a, it is that association. So what kind of person do you wish to be perceived as? And the perception is often reflected in these things on, that you see here. Is it the colors, the images, the designs, the tone, the messages, how you engage? There's, lot, there's books written on this subject about one color over another, the, 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 the font over this and the designs and the way you speak, et cetera. But think about creating a personality. Now, I would encourage you to take a bit of a risk here. Do you want to just be one of the masses or try and stand out from the crowd? Now, it's a tricky one, this is, because by taking a risk, the danger you may become alienating. But the other side of it is that you actually are then have got a strong association and you will come uh, away, from the, uh, away from the masses. And here is a great example. The best plumber advertising. Now, that gentleman there, in his vehicle there, you know, you pay your money, you take your chance, I said earlier. Humorous, standing out, you tell me whether you'd buy from that person, whether you wouldn't. But I will say one thing, you'll remember it. So brand personality. Risk was too far? Well, same way here. A very well-known um, business, Morris and Spot at Spottywood, but look, they've logoed, labelled their brands up and down the country. You can see ones in Glasgow, ones in Merseyside. I can't do accents, uh, as you probably realise. But Lennon and McCartney, Mints and Tatties, regional associations. So it's a national uh, business, but with a local emphasis. Memorable, risky, still in keeping the brand. So there's lots you can do. A great one here, a heavy slide, but, you know, a kennels, centre barks. Humorous or silly, memorable or demeaning for the brand. I would argue that memorable brands, and again, if you back it up with the whole support there, both for that and for the other businesses, if you can back up what you said you'll do, you'll, you'll get customers' attention. So think about perfecting your personality and encourage you to take what I described as a calculated risk. Now, final piece of the puzzle is to think about a brand promise. What are you going to get? So the atypical brand promises is a good example here. And there's a bit of a meditative theme here. I, I love this. Why meditate? At the gym, you pump iron. Here, you shed the weight of your world. So you may go to the gym and feel better for it, but if you come to here, we'll take the world off your shoulders, as it were. So you are giving, again, in the same way, it's a brand promise as well as the brand purpose. the woven together. So you actually are delivering something. So for the kennel, for example, your dog is going to be safe with us or whatever, the animal will be safe with us. Uh, for the for the um, 
facilities management company, there may be a brand promise there, and you've seen it elsewhere. I mentioned the good night's sleep and the, uh, the Italian restaurant, whatever it is, can you make sure that you can deliver, create a promise and deliver on it? Give you some examples now, the next two minutes on brands and some things where brands have changed the emphasis. And a good example is Airbnb. People and places and love. So they have changed their brand. They've gone from a very much a functionality convenience, a you know, a route to one about belonging and community. So the brand has, has shifted from its original concept. So they are to get hotels belong anywhere. So they have gone thinking that they want people to be part of a community. And so you are in this sort of Airbnb world and you can refer others and you can actually be part of something very, very special. So you feel part of a, of a tribe, as it were. But it's a complete shift in the way they've gone about business, as in, oh, here's, a great, here's a great cheap place to get a night and don't go to a hotel, to being part of the community and part of something special. You could argue it's the maturing of the brand. Burger King, probably uh, got its certain associations, but they've rebranded and changed. And they're talking very much about the, uh, the, the ingredients and the constituent parts now of the menu. So not just from a flavor point of view, but also from a health perspective. So it's very different focus. We're talking about uh, the way that they're trying to portray the brand. You can see that the colors have slightly changed. So again, trying to shift the narrative onto something else. And a good example was Tropicana, where things went went down. Well, I was going to say I was going to, say, I was going to do the pear shaped joke, but I can't. It's orange, so I won't go with that one. That's not really appealing. So they put Tropicana, as you can see, had the original familiar uh, uh, packaging with their uh, logo, on, and they changed to a hundred percent orange. And what happened? The customers didn't like it didn't like it so they went back so then so even the big the big boys get it wrong so they had something went off and came back and there's there's many examples of that so the, the argument the counter argument is that things can get tired so sometimes you you, you uh, create a, a brand or, a, or, a, or a campaigns people get familiar with and you change and the customers don't like it and they responded to customer feedback, which is about their brand identity and their brand image were aligned. And all of a sudden, they changed and they weren't. So never be frightened of going back. But we'll conclude today by coming up with some brand guidelines. All the things that you may wish to do in terms of creating your identity. We started with our quiz on logos, and you can see that you may wish to consider, shoot, I'm back on McDonald's again here, Burger King McDonald's, trying to keep the equilibrium. So as you can see, the, the, the logo changes, but right, on chalk on a wall, on the store, on the roadside, it's still the golden arches, but there's derivation. And you can see that the logo changes in the, in the drive-throughs, and look at the fantastic disruptive marketing in terms of crossing the road. So they're adapting the brand. And as I mentioned earlier, they even uh, chopped the logo in half. And they're disruptive again. You've driven past the arches. You can see that. So there's clever ways of keeping the brand, but, but modifying the message by adapting the logo. As I said, it changed with the advent of social distancing. And the uh, next thing to think about off the logo is the topography, typo, typography, not topography, typo, can't get it right. So this is down to the classic font, yes. But the old joke, wasn't it, about the three fonts that went into the pub? 
landlord said to them, we don't serve your type here. Now, again, it's a whole subject in itself, but worth looking this up to see that certain brands, certain fonts have an association. So the classic, the modern. So you may wish to consider that. And even a school of thought that if you're using some of the Google fonts, you're more likely to help your SEO. Mm. Colors, brand colors. Well, you've got primary color and you've got a secondary color. So think very much that the primary color is in the logo and then you, you work it alongside your brochures and your websites. There are so many stories about what orange means, what green means, what red means, what all the associations are. Again, worthwhile investing time and effort in looking at competition, reading all about this, but you know, and this sort of subliminal uh, kind of representation of the brand. And then you come down to probably what is the, one of the most important elements is about creating the right images. So from a photographer's perspective you know is that a great image of a photographer of a professional photographer you tell me is it, is it a wedding photographer is it not so you're if you are in that industry you also think the image of what you portray is it actually reflective what you do so you know that is again getting feedback and thinking about how your images portray yourself. Even this guy here, what was he thinking when he put that red jumper on to do, um, uh, to do uh, uh, some uh, marketing things on his YouTube channel? Yeah. The red jumper. He's at the charity shop now. Got rid of it. Maybe coming back in fashion one day. And then really reflecting on your your social media assets. It's surprising how often so many businesses I encounter a look on their screen and there's, there's a, a very little um, correlation between their Facebook and their Instagram and so forth. Are all your social media assets aligned? Now, they may become a situation here, for example, of uh, uh, ladies online fashion where they chose to invert images and colors on their website relative to Instagram, but the, the image is similar. Again, it's a slight variance. So there's no reason the same way that McDonald's did, that the feel is the same, but there is a slight variance there. So there's a, having a bit of latitude is not a, a bad way of doing it. And as I mentioned to Derek prior to coming on the webinar today, Often, you know, in Instagram is a good example of having a checkerboard effect on your feed. So the different ways of just standing out from the crowd. Now, we'll conclude by talking about branding during COVID. A little bit of homework for you. The world has shifted with social distancing, uh, with, with crowds, with washing your hands, and all those things that are taking place. So maybe you want to undertake some homework in looking at either your social media and or your website. And you may want to go back and repurpose it or change it or delete it. Maybe pictures of crowds might not be appropriate. For example, I was helping out a hospice recently, hospice, and they had lots of images and video of them talking to patients, which was fantastic. But nobody was wearing a mask. Not about not not that they were not that they weren't following the right protocols. It was an old video, and I strongly recommended that they took the video off because they weren't following the right clinical guidelines. So it was just one of those issues that sometimes in a business like that, it's absolutely critical to be perceived that you are following the likes of the NHS guidelines. So people are engaging with brands differently and they are looking at it, you know, in the post-pandemic world. So it actually is quite critical that the tone of the voice changes. So the images of friendly, I put it in these layman's terms, images of friendly nurses talking to bereaved families in a, um, I can't remember, find it, not the right way, touchy-feely kind of way, but I may so describe that, is probably not appropriate. So your voice may change. 
In the same way that it's finger licking good for Kentucky Fried Chicken, had to go, <laughs> not appropriate. But then the likes of Ikea, when all the stalls were closed this time last year, they released their meatball recipe. So they were giving something that had never done before. They were giving us the secret. So their focus, like many, was different. They were keeping contact with their customers and they were delivering on a brand promise, a brand editor, giving extra. And that's where things really have changed. So often the, the brand is educating and not irritating. They're offering value. The content reflects that. And even now we may all be moving, but it's still a crisis in many people's eyes, especially if you're trading internationally. So your brand must reflect that in all your content that going out, that it's purposed for what effect the new normal as we've come to know it. So that was three quarters of our whistle through the world of branding. And I hope it helped. So we've learned a little bit about brand image, brand identity, purpose, guidelines, all the things that you may need to think about and reflect it. But I would strongly advocate you think very much about brand image, and understand how you are perceived and to make sure the brand image matches your perception of brand identity. So there we are. It's come to afternoon tea or question time, no less. So as we say every week, the opportunity for a little bit of one-to-one -one help is allowed under the Humber uh, and East Yorkshire LEP programme. You'll get a copy of the slides. And next week, what are we talking about next week? Well, next week is all about how to monetize your website. So we'll be talking in all about that next week. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to see if anybody has any questions. They do. And without further ado, what have we got? Sal, depending on your audience as to whether a chosen front is dyslexic, speakers of other language friendly. Yes, great point. Great point. Thank you for that, Sal. Yes. Thinking, yeah, targeting your customers appropriately. Yeah. And so if there are issues relating to the uh, audience, then you may uh, adapt your font accordingly. Good point. Think that. Is there any other questions? There is one other question. Oh, question. Really key in certain industries. Absolutely. Yes. You know, um, there's a lot, a lot to be said for actually tailoring things to, uh, to specific audiences. Your, your websites, or whatever, may become more pictorial uh, as well in that. But yeah, making sure you hit the right mark. And the only way to do that is to ask. Uh, just on that point, there's never, there's never a wasted conversation with a customer. Yeah, thought today. Right. I have a brow beat you into submission. I think you have. Not quite. Well, if there are no further questions, I'm going to I'm going to bid you a fond farewell and thank you very much for attending. I will loiter around for the next few.